My name is Nat Muller. I'm the 2012 Abraj Capital Art Prize curator, standing in front of the exhibition Spectral Imprints, which is the first time ever for Abraj that there is a unified exhibition. Spectral Imprints refers to the idea of history and how history actually is taking us from the past into the present and also defines future moments. All the artists that are involved in spectral imprints relate in some way or other to historical narrative. How can we write it? How can we imagine it? How can we produce it? And can we at all relate to history in a way of visual representation? So I'll take you to a tour of the exhibition now. Come and follow me. This work is by a Palestinian artist, Taisir Batniji. Probably you don't see very much on the camera because in order to experience the work, you have to come very, very close to it. These are a series of 60 um, etchings on paper from photographs. What the artist actually did is work on negatives of photographs, maximize them, and then trace their contours. What we're looking at, these images are the wedding images of his brother, Maisara, who was assassinated in the first intifada in Gaza. And the pictures are um, taken two years before his death, during the wedding. So that's the time of the family coming together, of joy. And um, what this work beautifully does is that it really works how memory works that when you are far away from memory, it's a blank page, we can forget. But somehow, memory can also be manifested if we think of our loved ones or those whom we lost. So this work really requires a very intimate relation with the viewer. It really requires you to stand very, very close to it and trace the lines of this very personal memory uh, of Taisir Batniji. The next work is called China by Lebanese artist Raed Yassin. Raed Yassin is an artist who loves to work with popular culture, with mass production, even kitsch, if I can uh, add. He's also a fantastically talented musician. So what we're seeing here are actually seven vases, porcelain vases, that were produced in Jingdezhen in China, which is the capital of porcelain making in China. However, they're not just ordinary Chinese vases, but what you see here are very interesting intricate details of battles of the Lebanese Civil War. The battles um, are seven battles, seven vases, and they all are battles that really initiated big demographic and political shifts within this 15-year history of Lebanese Civil War from 1975 to 1990. So maybe we can just take you and have a look at one detail. It's important to point out that um, China refers as well to the material, it's porcelain, but also to the place where they were produced. And these vases, on the one hand, they're decorative objects. You can find them in any Le Lebanese home. You can buy them, not these, of course, but um, similar vases. At the same time, they are also an art object. They have a singularity. So it really combines all these different manifestations of the vases of the object, if you will. Perhaps we can um, go to a, a detail and view the details. This uh, vase actually is um, the 1982 Lebanese, uh, the, the invasion of Beirut in 1982 by the Israeli forces. So you really see here West Beirut being completely bombarded. And I want to take you to one vase and show you another detail. This vase is the War of the Hotels. So from anyone who has been to Beirut, you might recognize the holiday in here. The details are extremely intricate. You see the snipers on the buildings, the flags of the Lebanese forces. You see really the militias and also the details here, the guns. Another interesting aspect to point out is that pr what you can see in this vase is that um, the names of the battles and the names of the master, as per tradition in Chinese porcelain vase making, are also on the vase. Now, I don't read any Chinese, so I don't know which is which. I think this one is the Chinese master, this one is the battle. But um, they're also an important part of the work. Now I'm going to take you to the work of uh, Wa'el Shaoi. The title is very important. It's called A Glimpse of Clean History. And maybe 
the stuff that happens outside of the object of the artwork is more important than what we see happening in the work itself. You'll see what I mean if you come with me. Now, here you see something interesting happening. What we're looking at is actually a scene of Pope Urban II who is talking to his congregation, which led to the First Crusade. And the Crusades, you can also think of the Crusades as proto-globalization. It's a time of almost imperial expansion. And this was painted, this speech of Pope Urban II was painted by uh, Jean Fouquet, a French painter in the 15th century. And what Wael did is that he took the speech and the painting and he turned it in a three-dimensional object, which really speaks of the theatrics of history, the spectacle of history. We're waiting for something to happen. We're standing in front of this theater, and the curtain opens, and we ex expect a spectacle, and it never happens. And we stay again, and it opens, and it's always a static scene. And in a theater, you always expect that something will happen, and it never does. So what's happening here is that the artist is really playing and controlling the viewing experience and the gaze of the uh, visitor, and that's quite interesting. And the whole title, A Glimpse of Clean History, also suggests that history can never be clean. He really is literally giving us a snapshot here, but what does it mean? It's a reference that he chose, and he also cho chooses how to show it to us. So it really works on this dynamics. We're standing in front of the work of uh, Risham Seyed. She's a Pakistani artist who lives in Lahore. Risham is very much interested in the Victorian era, so the era of the British Raj, uh, an era of imperialism, of globalization again. I think most of the works here, in a very interesting way, touch on economy, on trade, on modes of production. That The vases do that, um, Risham's quilts do that in a very different way. Now, traditionally, quilts are um, objects um, that are made by women in the house. The Victorian era is a very important moment when the segregation between private and public is becoming sharper. The whole um, my myth of the angel in the house, of women being inside of the house, becomes um, the ideal for women. And what Risham has done is that she takes those issues and these notions of domesticity and she reworks them into quilts. Now you have to remember that quilts over the ages have always been platforms for women, um, whether working alone in the house or whether at quilting bees, to express political notions or to commemorate, for example. What we see here, this quilt is um, a quilt that's called Bangladesh. We have seven quilts, they all depict a specific place. And um, on the quilt we have uh, printed a map and uh, very important to point, point out that all the quilts have maps from specific trade routes that were very important during the Victorian era. We have the maps, we have the specific trade routes, the artists went to all these places to source the fabric, but she also shows us pockets of resistance against imperial rule. So for example, this figure here is Surya Sen, very important Bengali freedom fighter, and this is being reappropriated, rethreaded into this history of colonial um, times, which are often um, sp told in a very specific way. And the artist is in some way rethreading that history, literally, but also uh, metaphorically, by patching these um, histories of resistance into the work. This work is uh, Mumbai. Sri Lanka. And this one is very interesting because it's the only white quilt. This one is called Preston, and actually the photo we're seeing here, the artist took herself in Preston train station, however it looks very ancient. Preston in the 19th century was the center for cotton production, so very important for imperial history. And it's almost as if the white quilt is telling us here is where it all begins. The backs of the quilts 
are all traditional. They've been also been worked on, interesting details as well. And perhaps also interesting to mention that the artist used some of her own family's quilts um, to work into the project. This is United Arab Emirates. So you see here in 1819, the rebellion of the Kawasim, a tribe in uh, Ras al Khaima. Turkey with the Turkish Greek wars. And here, I guess, the pièce de résistance. This is um, Pakistan. These details that you see here are actually old uh, buttons, army buttons, from uh, uniforms. So I'll take you now to this last but certainly not least project. This work is by Lebanese artist duo Joana Gitoma and Khalil Jorej. They usually work a lot on the Lebanese context and issues and of representation and the politics of representation. For this project, they have ventured somewhat outside of their comfort zone and have made a work called A Letter Can Always Reach Its Destination. And they have used spam and scam emails, which they have collected over the past 10 years as their source material. Now, usually email spam and email scam is something that is relegated to the dustbin of your computer. But here the artists have used it as a communication that is embodied. Spam and scam material comes alive by non-professional actors transforming the narratives that we read in spam and scam as scenarios. They become narratives of social and political change of a particular region.